So this is we're going to be looking at creating elements and how we can append them to the page, prepend them using append child, and also how we can remove elements from the page. We're going to create a number of elements, list them all out with unique content as we loop through the values, adding in 10 page elements to the page. In the HTML page, we've got an element with a class of output. So we're going to be selecting that element and then adding additional elements into the page. So just as we were selecting elements and assigning variables to them, we can also create elements using the document create element method. So first off, let's select the element with the class of output using the document and then query selector, selecting the element with a class of output. And that's going to bring it into the output variable. So the element object will now be able to be referenced using the output variable. You can try that out within the console and just to make sure that you are able to select the element and you should see the output returning back the element that was selected within the query selector. So we can create elements as well. So if we want to create a new element, we can use the document and the create element method. And then we need to specify within the parentheses as a string value, the type of element that we want to create. So in this case, I'm going to be creating an element that's going to be a div. And let's log out within the console. We'll output the first element that we selected. And then we'll also output that new element that we just created. So we'll have both elements that we're going to output into the console. So when we output them, we see that we've got the first element with a class of output, so that's the one that we selected. The second element is just going to be a div. Let's go ahead and we're going to add some content into each one of these, and we'll see what the results is. So adding the inner HTML, and in this case, I'll just write test1. And for the output2 element, let's write test2. And I'll update these to be 1 and 2, and just update the variable names so that they match, and I'll add in a space. So the only one that actually got updated was the one on the page. So we do have a variable where we're selecting the element with the output class, and then we're updating the property of the inner HTML. The second one, although it's going to contain the inner HTML property, it's not visible on the page. And that means that we need to add it. So let's go ahead and we're going to select a place to add it. We can add it into the document body by using the append method. And then within the parentheses, we need to specify where, where which element that we want to append. So now the result was that we appended to the body of the HTML page, the output element that we had just created. So that's output two. If we go into the elements, there's our newly created element that we've added with the value of test two contained within it. So if we wanted to append it into an existing element, so let's go ahead and we'll do that, where we've got an element that we've already selected, and that's going to be the output 1. And we're going to append the output 1 with the output 2. And we'll see what the result is now. So we immediately, we don't see a difference within the page. But when we open up the HTML h1, just need to do a quick update there. So within the HTML h1, we're seeing that we do have the output. So the original value of test1, but that newly created div is now nested within the parent of the original div element. So we can also use the prepend method in order to set the element above the selected element. So if we were to use the document body, and we're going to prepend the output to what that will do is that's going to move the element test to above the h1. So it'll prepend all the other contents that are contained within the body. So that places test to above the original elements. And it also moves the element around on the page because this element is uh, the output to is being referring to an element object. The element object can only be in one place on the page at a time. So moving it and appending it to different parents is going to move it on the page. So it's not actually creating a new element. It's just moving that element on the page. So that's still going to be always referencing that same element and the inner HTML of that element remains the same. You can also use the append child and show you how an example of that. So we'll select the output one element 
and then using the append child instead of append, we're going to append the child of output two. So that once again did the same thing that the append did. And the difference between the append child and append is that append child actually has a returned value. So it does have a response value that gets returned back. Whereas when we're using the append, there is no response value. So we'll just set those to response one and response two, and I'll output those values into the console. So for response one, when we look to see what's going to be sitting in the console, as opposed to what we have for response two, let's open up the console value and we see that the response one gets undefined because there's no returned value. So it's only for the append child that we're able to return the value. We can also remove an element from the page. So if we want to remove an element from the document, we need to select the element that we want to remove. And the remove child removes an element from the parent. So we do need to know the parent element in order to do the remove. If we try to do a document body, since this isn't going to be a node, it's not going to be able to use the remove child. So if we were to do a remove child and select an element child that we want to remove, and we know that the output two is sitting within the body, it's going to throw an error because we need to, we can only select it removing it from a parent. So in this case, we've appended the output two to output one as the parent. So we can replace this with output one, and this is going to effectively allow us to remove the page element. So now when we go into the HTML, that new element that we created with test two has been removed from the page. It's no longer available within the page. If we use the console log, and if we look to see what we have for the page element, that element is still going to exist. And we can bring that element back if we want, because we're still referencing that element object. So if we want to bring it back and add it back into the page, we can select the output one using the append or the append child and append the output two element. And now it's back on the page. So you can remove it. If you're not sure what the parent is, you can select the element and get the parent of the element. And we'll be looking at this in a little bit more detail in the upcoming lessons. But in order to get the parent node of the element that we're looking for, we can use the parent node property. So let's select the output to element. And if this is the one that we want to remove, we, we can get back the parent node value. And this will return back within the console, the current parent node, which is the element with the output. So if we weren't, did, weren't sure about that, the element, or if we hadn't selected it, we can take the parent node and then do a remove of the child and then setting up the element that we want to remove. So that will effectively select the parent and allow us to do a remove child from that parent element that we're selecting the parent node of that element. So create a quick loop. We'll create a bunch of elements on the page and we'll add them all into the output. So depending on how many elements we want to create, let's create a 10 elements within the page and we'll use the output one as the parent element. So first we create the element that we want to use using the document create element. And the elements that we're creating is going to be a div and then adding the div into output one uh, using the append method in order to append the newly created element into output one. Let's add in some inner HTML and make it all different. We can use the value of I within the inner HTML and that will add a bunch of elements to the page. So one of the commonly asked questions is what's the difference between if we're setting the inner HTML of an element or if we're creating new elements. So this is also personal preference on the developer. So at the end, you can create the HTML code that gets rendered using the inner HTML. And I'll show you how you can do that. And it is more effective to do it as you're doing a create element because this gives you the element object as a variable and that way you can reference it 
you can update some of the attributes properties and use the various methods available but if it's only going to be text that you're adding in then you can also do it that way where you're setting up and creating the html content and then adding that into the element so let's go ahead and we're going to create that and i'll do a separate loop for this where we're using a loop just as we did using the variable of i I'm going to set a value of HTML, just a blank variable. And then as we loop through, construct the HTML, adding in a div. And within the div, I'll just type HTML instead of the index, and then closing off the div. So what that is going to do is that's going to give us a block of HTML code, which we can then assign to output one inner HTML and add that HTML block into their, that value. So the result will be similar. And then here, if we go over to the elements, we've got all of the HTML div elements. They're not selected as objects. And if we wanted them as objects, then we would have to once again, make a selection of the element within the document object. Creating the elements as we're looping through also gives us an ability to add existing content to the element. So if output one already has content, then we would need to assign the original HTML to the output one content and then loop through it, construct all of the HTML, and then lastly, overwrite the HTML. So the create element method is a much more effective way to add elements and create elements on the page. If you are creating elements, use the create element method within the document object.